Welcome to the Sudoku tutorial brought to you by Master Sudoku. Today we'll talk about Y wing strategy. Look at this figure. A, B and C are three different candidate numbers in a rectangular formation. Three of the corners have the candidates A, C, A, B and B, C. The cell marked A, B is the key. If a solution to that cell turns out to be A then C will definitely occur in the lower left corner. If AB turns out to be B then C is certain to occur in the top right corner. C is a complementary pair. So whatever happens, C is certain in one of those two cells marked C. The red C can be seen by both Cers. The cell is a confluence of both BC and AC. It's impossible for a C to live there, and it can be removed. If A, B and C are aligned more closely they can see a great deal more cells than just the corner of the rectangle they make. In this figure BC can see AB because they share the same box. AC can see AB because they share the same row. BC and AC can see all the cells marked with a red C, where this Y wing can eliminate whatever number C is. Now let's look at this puzzle. The first Y wing finds the AB cell in EY to which links 8 with the pair on B3 and the 3 in J2. Common to both the pincer cells is for which must go in either B3 or J2 so 4 in H3 can be removed. The second Y wing gets to candidates because of the alignment in column 1. The 8S in B1 and C1 can both see the cells EY2 and G1 which also contain 8. These pincer cells are linked to the pair 4, 3 in J2. The third step is included because it shows a very neat rectangular alignment, which almost mirrors the theory diagram. You couldn't ask for a clearer example. Four must go in B1 or D6 otherwise 7 and 8 would be used up, and there'd be nothing to go in B6. The 4 in D1 is the lone candidate that can see the yellow cells and should be removed. That is how Y-Wing works. Now go get some practice and deepen your knowledge of Sudoku strategies and techniques.